Welcome to Cause We Can News. I'm Jess, I'm, I'm Bayliss. And I'm Laura. T in today's stories, a new crime wave is sweeping the country in the form of woolen graffiti. Scientists have, be have invented an invisibility cloak and we help them find it. And the latest in the weather around the country. But first, a story that will turn your world upside down. If you think the world is getting more and more topsy-turvy, it turns out you're right. Builders in Germany have built an upside-down house and before you think they have read the plans upside down, they did it on purpose. The wiki abode was built as a tourist attraction as well as it being a comment on the state of the world. The house is 23 feet tall and rests on its roof and its beams are in the attic. Inside the house, there are beds screwed to the ceiling, upside down wardrobes. I'm waiting. An upside down kitchen and even an upturned bathroom, even though it's not known if anyone has tried to bathe in it or has gone to the toilet. Normally, a house is like. Oh, a house like this would take three weeks to build. This one took over four months because workers kept getting confused by the strange angles of the wall. Many tourists visiting the house complained of feeling sick and dizzy after just a few minutes inside. We now cross over to Mitch, who was inside the house. How are you feeling, Mitch? Thanks, Bayless. I'm here with the owner of the house, Sean, and I'm feeling quite anxious about being in an upside down house. So, Sean, what made you deci to decide to build an up upside down house? Well, much in, in my childhood dreams, I've always wanted to build an upside down house. Very exciting. What comment do you feel that the house makes about the state of the world? I feel the world is upside down, so I had to build an upside down house to feel comfortable with. Okay. What are some challenges of living in a, in a house where everything is upside down? Well, sleeping in my bed is quite weird. I have to get out in the cold during the night or upside down. Well, before we wrap this up, I'm going to put one more question in. What are people's thoughts about you and your upside down house? Well, Mitch, everyone thinks I'm a bit crazy, but this is how I want to live and this is how I want to do it in my life. Well, there you have it. Well, thank you for joining us. I'm Mitch Rababa. For Cosby Can News, back to you, Bayless and Laura, in the studio. Thanks, Mitchell. Even watching that makes me feel queasy. And now, a story that is truly out of sight. Look out, Harry Potter. The world of science is catching up to the world of magic. Scientists in Europe have created a 3D invisibility cloak, which can hide objects bending light waves. It has been found that light can be controlled by using special tiny crystals that make objects disappear. So far, scientists have made small objects such as coins disappear, but hope that it won't be long before they're hiding cars, planes, and even people. People have always dreamed of making themselves invisible. One top scientist says the possibilities are endless, and we are very excited. However, since, the since inventing the invisibility cloak, the scientists have been trouble finding it. As soon as we put it down somewhere, it just disappears the inventor of the cloak said. It appears they are having trouble finding other things too, like their lunch, which they think might be underneath the cloak. What will this invention actually be used for? Hoping to see through the reasons behind the invisibility cloak. Here is our on-the-spot reporter, Eli, with more on this story. Hi, I'm Eli, and with me is Connor, one of the scientists behind the invisibility cloak. Hi Connor, and thanks for joining us today. I'm glad to be here. What made you want to invent the cloak? Because my friend's face is very ugly and I had to, you know, make an invisibility cloak for him. His name's Stephen, by the way, not naming any names. And I had to make the invisibility cloak because his face is very ugly so he could hide it from the world. And also because I'm fascinated with toenails. Can you show me how it works, please? What do you hope the cloak will be used for? Armed robbery, because that would make the crime world so much better. 
And how old are you? I'd probably need a calculator, but if I had to guess, I'd say somewhere around 112. Well, that makes things very clear. Thanks for joining us. And we're out of time. Over to you, Laura. Hi, Laura. <laughs> Thanks, Eli. And now, how's this for an interesting yarn? A wave of... A new wave of graffiti crime has, is covering the country, thanks to an underground gang known as the Midnight Knitters. These wool-waving criminals are covering tree branches and lamp posts with small knitted jerseys and scarves under the cover of darkness. Police have labelled the knitted activities of the gang illegal because their wool crimes are being done on public property without permission. The popularity of wool and graffiti is growing and more and more public objects are being wrapped up warm and cosy every night because the problem is growing in length and width. Police say and warn that if the midnight knitters aren't caught soon, every tree, lamppost and traffic light in the country will be colourfully dressed against the cold. The problem is spinning out of control. There are a close-knit group of dyed-in-the-wool criminals. We are stitching together a case, but it's not seamless. What needless it me is that there is no real pattern to the crimes, a police spokesman said. So far, the criminal knitters have escaped arrest and continue to pull the wool over the eyes of both the public and the police. We go now to a secret location with our investigative reporter, Mitch, who has an exclusive interview with one of the Midnight Knitters gangs. Thanks, Bellas. I'm Mitch, and joining me in this secret location is a member of the Midnight Knitters gang. Hello, awesome. And thanks for joining us. What led you to the dark underworld of graf knitted graffiti? Uh, well, my mum was a knitter, and her art was very good, but I never got out there. So I thought I'll take it into my own hands and get it out there myself. Now, do you see yourself as a criminal? No, no, I don't. Why not? I mean, I ain't hurting nobody, and I'm doing it on things people don't even care about. Well, apart from trees, lampposts, and traffic lights, what else would you like to put your woolens on? Uh, basically on anything that people can see, you know? Well, before we go... So how, is my last question, so how long have you been doing this for? About five years. Well, thanks for your time, Awesome, of the Midnight Knitters Gang. We now go over to Susanna with the weather update. Thank you, Mitch, and good morning, New Zealand. Let's have a look at tomorrow's weather. Starting in the far north, a completely unexpected tropical storm in Kaitaia with some pretty flash flooding and raindrops as big as your head. If you're going outside, wear a hat. Moving down to the island in Auckland, there will be a mix of fair conditions and unfair conditions until lunchtime. But these are the conditions, and you'll just have to accept them. An anticyclone meets a tropical cyclone in the Bay of Plenty. Tune in tomorrow to see what will happen. Will they fight or cancel each other out? Maybe they'll end up as friends and wait and see. In Napier and Hastings, the weather will be occasionally changeable and occasionally not. We have really no idea what will happen. There, in Taranaki, a mild depression brings with it a very dull day, with no highlights whatsoever. It'll be gloomy, overcast and miserable all morning. However, things should cheer up by the evening. So don't worry, everything will be flying. Wellington will have another capital day. There'll be no wind at all and the day conditions will be so pleasant, they'll actually be classed as extreme. In the top of the South Island, Kaikoura can expect to have a good day, meeting friends for lunch, going for a swim, or reading the newspapers. But whatever you do, try to stay indoors, as the weather will be just terrible. A real mix for Christchurch, where excessive rainfall hit along with some unreasonable rainfall, sensible wind, moderate thunderstorms, and a smattering of very angry snow. And in the lower south, Dunedin will be frosty, cold, and unfriendly until late morning when the sun will pop over for a visit. Everyone likes the sun. That's all from me. Remember, if it's raining outside, that's the weather for you. Catch you later, New Zealand. Now it's back to you, Jess and Laura. Thanks, Susanna. Well, that's all we have time for. 
We hope you've enjoyed this morning's newscast uh, from the Cusby Can News. Thanks for watching and we hope you'll meet, see you next time. From the whole team at Cusby Can News, goodbye. Roll the camera. Okay. 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 Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight we have featured an interview with a very peculiar looking gentleman. Scene one, take one. Thank you.